My name is Nancy Strasser. Um, I currently live in California. I come back to New Hampshire for the summers. Um, years ago, in the late 1940s, my family and I moved to Dunbarton from Pepperell, Massachusetts. And it was quite a transition from a, um, a school that had two rooms for each grade to a two-room schoolhouse with four grades in each room. I really learned how to concentrate when we were mixed in together. That's good. Yeah. Having um, come to Dunbarton from a larger town, several mills, a railroad running through it, Dunbarton was very quiet, and especially the school was different. Mrs. Fotler was the teacher in um, the upper grades, the fourth through the eighth, or rather the fifth through the eighth, and the one through the fourth grades were Mrs. Hayes. I had um, four brothers and sisters, and we were split between the two rooms. The first day that we came to school um, at the two-room schoolhouse, we had to wait outside to be let in, and it had snowed, and my older sister Emily was hit with a snowball, and <laughs> everyone was really sympathetic, but we didn't think that was a good start for the school year. But spending the time going to school there, we lived at the bottom of Barnard Hill, and sometimes the school bus, which there wasn't a school bus, it was somebody's little car or van, took us, couldn't come down the road. And I remember the Sweeney's lived next door to us down the hill, and we walked to school together. And uh, David Sweeney, one of the boys in the family, had a metal lunchbox, and we were walking up Barnard Hill, and there's a really steep part. And he dropped his lunchbox and had to go down half a mile to get his lunchbox back again. I remember the young people in the town um, built a double runner with a steering wheel and used to go down Barnard Hill and roar down through there. That was quite exciting to watch. Sometimes when we were going into town, not on a school day, we would take our sleds up the top of the hill and leave them hidden in the woods. And then when we went home, we'd just hop on our sleds and slide down the hill all the way home. Um, the school, I think, was as good as a larger school anywhere. Um, when we first went there, my sister and I, I was in the fifth grade, she was in the uh, sixth grade. They would have whole room spelling bees. And she and I would be the last one standing for a while. And then we sort of melted in with all the rest. But evidently the um, Pepple schools were a little ahead in vocabulary. And then um, we had a drawing teacher that came once a week. Miss Crayon, I think her name was, which was good. And then we had a music teacher, and we used to uh, put plays on. Um, the playground was what is now next to the town hall, and there were two boys that were still in school. I think they were the Hodgton boys. Big, tall boys, maybe almost six foot and we were these little kids, and they, their favorite thing was to run across the playground, pick up one of the small children, and run to the other end and drop you they, over on the other side of the playground. Scary for us, but they thought it was great fun. I think they were probably older than they needed to get on to the next grades, but they were kind of stuck. Um, we went across to the town hall for our school lunches. And uh, unless we brought it, and sometimes we would sit in back in the cemetery and eat our lunch. Um, but we loved the teachers. Uh, Mrs. Hayes was really a favorite, and I think she just died not too long ago, but kids were still going back to see her. Uh, Mrs. Butler was ill part of the time when I was there, and um, Mrs. Height came in. She wasn't quite the favorite. I remember the boys put a snake in her just a drawer. She wasn't too happy. <laughs> um, but I, I think my school days were wonderful because there were seven in my class and 
all of the things that we did, we did as a whole group. The whole school went to whatever functions there were, Halloween parties or um, things at the town hall. And <clears throat> I think that really made a difference in my schooling from that other school where there were 25 kids in one classroom. But um, all in all, it was a great, um, great experience. Living in the country, we had lived in town in Pepperell. Living in the country, uh, my mom renamed the bottom of the hill uh, Skunk Hollow when the skunk cabbage came out. And then in the summer, she named it Dry Gulch because the wells would always go dry. And we'd have to put milk cans in the truck and drive up to the town hall and fill the cans with water. Uh, when we first moved into that house, there was no running water. And then finally they put in one cold water faucet. And so we did have that. <clears throat> the house was built in a U-shape. And there was a, a washing outfit, I guess. There was a fire to put the water on. And there were two tubs with a ringer, a hand ringer in between. And then I can remember when we got the first electric washing machine. That was quite a deal. Uh, my mom was fun-loving, liked to have a lot of kids around. We used to put on um, big Halloween parties and she would decorate and make all these funny things for kids to have. Um, my uncle who lived next to us, Boyd Maxwell, and his wife Sarah had um, huge um, vegetable gardens. They had um, I think probably 30 to 40 head of dairy cows, and they sold the milk. Um, but there was always plenty of um, vegetables, and we worked for my uncle a lot. We would weed and, and uh, clean up around the gardens. My mom used to make a uh, cake every year called witch grass, right? Witch grass on it because it was such a <laughs> persistent weed to get rid of. Then when um, the town had a lot of activities going on, in the town hall especially. Um, sometimes plays were done by people in the community. I remember one um, where it was the Pied Piper of Hamlin, only the gentleman rewrote it. And uh, people were a little suspicious of him because he came from New York. He lived <laughs> on the main street in Dunbarton. And he um, wrote this play and I don't remember how old I was, but I played the Pied Piper and everyone had forgotten that there was a trap door in the stage and partway through it took all the kids and took them down into that trap door and everybody was a little upset wondering where the heck their kids went. But I found out later, in later years, that it was a, a satire, a political satire, whatever it was he wrote. <laughs> and we were just players in his... his uh, event. My mom um, acted in some big play that was put on the town hall and she sang uh, Way Down on the Levee and I can't remember what the name it was. It must have been some musical play but it was quite exciting. Um, I remember the town. Uh, the Merrill's, uh, not the Merrill's, but the Rummel store was still there. The Rummel's were there and in the corner in the back was the old post office and it was just a window with a grating, and I think Mr. Pierce was there. And if you went in to get a uh, money order, he would fill it out by hand, and he was uh, very flourished in his writing, old-fashioned writing. And I remember my eye just being about as high as the, as the top of the grill, and he would start winding up, and then he would write out your money order. It was a beautiful thing. I wish I had a copy of one of them that he did. But um, we used to have uh, baseball games. Just the kids got together and, and played baseball. Um, a group of girls and I, about the same age, someone had gotten this book and it was called Polly Pigtails. And so we sent away for the, <clears throat> the stuff to start a club of our own. So for several years we had Polly Pigtails Club. And then a family moved in town and the lady said, well, uh, wouldn't you rather be Girl Scouts and be part of a large organization? So we agreed. And at that time we had 
baked cookies and done things and we had about three hundred dollars in our treasury and I still have my card somewhere that says uh, Girl Scout Troop Number One, Dunbarton, New Hampshire. And um, that family, very soon after, moved out of town with our three hundred dollars. We were quite upset, <laughs> but it was an experience. So Girl Scouts kept on, though. We kept on. We didn't give it up. Uh, let me think. I was going to talk about some of the people in the town. Can um, I take a break for just a second? Sure. Okay. I remember the um, people of the town, the Zellers, were uh, really mm, a prominent family in the town. Um, Marion and Bill Zeller. Marion Zeller taught, uh, church, taught school in Gosstown. She taught in the high school for years. She was also the basketball coach. And she was quite a lady. Uh, she could teach you English and literature and then turn around and coach the basketball team. And if you went to class and you got her talking about the game the night before, sometimes the whole class would go by and <laughs> we wouldn't get homework. <laughs> but she was quite a lady. Um, Bill Zella was a farmer. I remember their barn was full of hay right behind the town hall. And we used to go in there and run around and jump in the hay. Um, and I think um, Harold Mooney was the bus driver that used to drive us up from Barnard Hill. <clears throat> and he had a small, uh, kind of like a little van. And he used, for some reason he used to go over to Zeller's. I don't know if he went for a cup of coffee or what, but anyway, he would park the truck in the drive. And one day he parked it there and didn't put the brake on. And the truck started backing down towards the town hall. And somebody ran up and pulled the emergency brake on it. So we were saved. <laughs> I remember seasonal happenings in Dunbarton. Um, that was a big part of life then. Um, in the winter, um, we would have... Uh, wood to chop, wood to get ready. Everybody was chopping and sawing wood and getting ready for the winter. Um, I think we had three stoves in our house. We had the old soapstone stove and then the kitchen stove. kitchen stove had a big tank at the back that you put the water in to heat to do your dishes. And, um, and then we had one more stove in a sort of a den. But at night you would get a piece of soapstone in a square brick and that would be on the stove and wrap it in newspapers to take up to bed because nothing was heated upstairs. It was icy. And I can remember we always came downstairs to dress in front of the stove because it was much too cold to dress up there. My sister backed up against the stove one time. She claimed she had quality um, burnt on her butt. <laughs> standing close to the stove to put her clothes on. But <laughs> it was um, fun with the sliding and tobogganing. We had a great hill right at the house. I remember we had one pair of old wooden green skis and there were five of us. And if you wanted to get on those, you had to get up very early in the morning and disappear for the whole day because <laughs> if you came back, you had to share the skis. Um, we used to go and ski down at Coulter's. The Coulter family uh, was a family that owned a bunch of goats. As a matter of fact, we drank goat's milk after my uncle moved and didn't have cows. We um, drank Coulter's goat's milk for years. Everybody always goes, yuck, but it wasn't bad. <laughs> we got used to it. My mom used to make cheese <clears throat> um, in some kind of a cloth bag and hang it on the clothesline. Um, she canned all kinds of like tomatoes. Tomatoes were always tons of tomatoes. And pickle with green tomatoes. Um, I think you name it, she canned it sometime or other. We made jellies. And um, we all belonged to the 4-H. And when you went to 4-H, you would do something to take to the Hopkinton Fair. And uh, one year my sister made an apron and I made, I think, apple mint jelly. 
and she got an A for her apron and I got a B for my jelly. It was a little bit cloudy. And they get, he gave you a check. She got a check for a dollar and I got a check for 75 cents. And at that time my mother was working at Newberry's in Manchester and we went in to do our shopping. And she sent us to the bank to cash these two checks. And again, I can remember I was just high enough to, for my eyes to be at the counter and the lady took the checks away and she talked to somebody and then she came back and she started piling money up in front of us. And then finally my sister said, um, <clears throat> we just need a dollar and 75 cents. <laughs> lady looked a little pale, but she took all the money back and gave us a dollar and 75 cents for our two checks from the, from the Hopkinton Fair. Hopkinton Fair was always great. I remember my Aunt Sarah Maxwell, who lived next door with my Uncle Boyd. Uh, she went to the fair and she was a lady who worried about her earthly goods all the time. <clears throat> so she'd always put all her insurance papers and important stuff in her purse and haul it off with her wherever she went. She went to the fair this one day and went into the restroom and lost her purse down the hole. And of course that was uh, the old fashioned outhouse type and it was on a hillside. And so there was quite a commotion because they had to dig in that hillside to get her purse out for her. She was the talk of the town for a while then. <laughs> um, I remember my grandfather, um, before we moved to Dumbarton, we would go up and visit him at this house that we lived in after he and my grandmother moved out and he did maple sugaring. He had huge copper utensils and he had a sledge and he had a horse and he would drag it down through the back fields and over the stone wall and then he had a sap house down there. I remember spending nights down there while we fed the fire. He fed the fire of course, we were just sitting around. and. Um, keeping the fires going to make the maple sugar. That was great fun. Then when he moved away, we did it for a while in the house, but that was not good because it steamed up the whole house and not good for us to make it inside. So finally it ended. Um, that house that we lived in uh, used to be the John Stinson house. And Fred Whittier, my cousin, um, owned it. And he was just beginning to farm and he was trying out every kind of animal there was. He had goats, he had a cow, he had chickens, and then one day we went out and he had electric fence all around and he had these long horned cattle from Texas. Whatever they were, they disappeared after a while. I guess it didn't really work out for him, but it was fun to be there. In the summertime was the best time um, when school was out. We would get up in the morning and disappear for the whole day. Um, nobody worried about us. We were in the woods or around wherever. We, we tried to dam up a brook and make ourselves a swimming pool. We um, climbed trees. We each had a tree in the front yard, which was our house, and we'd invite each other over to sit on different limbs that were supposed to be the, the uh, house, the bedroom or the living room or the kitchen to eat and um, <clears throat> it was just a wonderful, wonderful time. We used to walk from our house down to Clough uh, Reservation to swim. Of course it didn't have the dam then, it was just a river and the um, sandbar was across the river. It wasn't very deep, I could walk across but my little brothers and sisters couldn't quite make it so they'd have to swim a little bit. I can remember them panicking in the middle and then we'd go over and just haul them back in and bring them over there. And we did take Red Cross uh, swimming lessons down there. But um, that was about, I don't know, it must have been a four or five mile walk. And I can remember going home was always the worst because it was dusty and hot. By the time we got back, we wished we were back in the river again. But um, I spent my whole days just spent walking um, through the woods on the logging roads. Um, sometimes we worked a little bit for my Uncle Boyd, but mostly we were just free to go and be during the day. Um, I'm trying to remember some other people in town. Um, Let me take a little break. Mm -hmm. Let's 
see. Church was a big part of our life in Dumbarton. My mother, um, there were five of us, and she would dress us for church and send us off, and I think that was because she wanted some time out herself. <laughs> we walked up to the Congregational Church most every Sunday, um, and were active in Sunday school, and the um, right next door was the what do they call it, the parish house, the little house? And there would be some dances there and some entertainment things, some Halloween things. Um, in the summertime, the Baptist church in East Ware, which is no longer there, um, they had these southern ladies that came up from Tennessee or somewhere, and they would drive these old rattly cars and come and pick up kids and take them down for Bible school. And we used to, we used to go, it was great fun. Um, that old church, of course, is gone, but my Uncle Boyd um, built a small house out of a whole bunch of the wood that came from that church. Um, and I remember even some of the pews sitting around over at this place he built. But um, I remember one Christmas, um, I think it was Bennett Zella. Nobody remembered that there was even a balcony there, because I don't think we ever used it but um, they had a night service and as part of the service he sang Oh Holy Night from up on that balcony and it was beautiful. beautiful. That's a beautiful church. I love that church. Um, I went to visit a few years back and the minister came out and took us way up to the belfry. And I took pictures from up there. Very nice. Uh, I heard that they got an organ from Vermont that was um, that they bought from Vermont and put in there. When we were there, I don't think there was an organ. Let me see. I can remember skating on a pond in town and having a, a bonfire, skating around it. We skated everywhere. Across the street from our house was like a bog, and it would have these humpy, grassy things, and we'd just skate all around and get a little angry sometimes if the snow fell and you have to get a shovel and go down and shovel it out before you could skate. But sometimes there were perfect times when the ice was there and no snow and you could skate forever. It was really great fun. Um, when um, I graduated from Dunbarton, uh, we always had the graduation in the town hall and the girls always wore pastel dresses, different colors, and um, then you had a choice. You could either go to Concord or go to Goffstown, and the town would pay your tuition either place. And um, my mom got a job in Goffstown, so we moved to Goffstown. Um, that last semester that we were in Dunbarton, my three younger brothers and sisters were boarded over at Coulter's because we moved down with an aunt down there and there wasn't enough room for all of us. And then they moved on down and we got a house in Goffstown. And so I was in Dunbarton from late 1946. I can remember uh, being in the front yard and hearing the church bell start ring when the war ended. And then um, we started to school and had four, five wonderful years in Dunbarton. It was a, a great life, and I feel truly blessed to have been a part of Dunbar. Go ahead. Talking about um, winters in Dunbarton, um, the Hodgson family, Alma Hodgson was in my class at the school, and her dad was the road agent. And one time, uh, she invited about four of us over and bring our sleds and her dad was doing the plowing, and he plowed the back hill, um, not towards Montaloma, but probably from um, Burnham Hill down, and it was about four miles, and he didn't sand it, and um, it was late at night, crispy cold, and we slid down that hill, and it, I think it was about maybe two or three miles down there, but we just kept going and going and going, and then he met us at the bottom, we put our sleds in this big truck and he took us back up the hill and we had hot chocolate at the Hodgkins. But that was a wonderful experience. 